All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A172 right over here for processing both sub-audio and audio rate signals. Uh, if you were with us in the last two segments, you would have seen the processing of sub-audio signals. I think that's the one we did first. And then we did audio rate signals, which was the one immediately preceding this segment. Um, and at the very, very beginning, we did some basics of the A172. But this time I thought it would be good to kind of combine the two so we can kind of get a good idea of what will happen when you process those two types of signals in the A172. So let's go ahead and start processing here. Uh, we're gonna get a couple things going here. Um, I actually wanted to start with a saw wave. So I'm gonna patch a saw wave from here. And we're just gonna go into the top of the max and minimum selector. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what this is actually doing. I'm gonna assume that you watched some of the previous segments here. Um, I'm just gonna set my cable down here. You should be hearing tone now. And if we look over at our oscilloscope, we can see our audio rate signal. There we go, nice little saw. Now let me unpatch that temporarily and I'm just gonna kinda leave it hanging out right here for a moment. I'm gonna get my sub-audio signal. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna take, let's do a sine wave from here, my A147 uh, voltage controlled LFO, and I'm gonna patch it into number two right here so we can see what that's gonna look like. And if we look over at our oscilloscope, we can see a nice little waveform moving up and moving down, okay? So we're gonna be combining those two here. We're not actually combining, but if you know the principles behind this, it's actually gonna be looking at the maximum voltage uh, that's being input at any of these four at any given moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpatch that, and now let's see what these two look like together. So there's our saw wave signal. And then here we go with our sine wave. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope right there. And you can see there's quite a change from our normal saw wave. And it's kind of moving in that kind of uh, frequency that we saw where we were just looking at the LFO. Now on my A147, I actually have kind of a, well, I would say about a mid uh, frequency here set. We could try something a little bit different with this. Let's try and bring it a little lower. See how that affects the visuals over at the oscilloscope. See there for the most part, you know, I can see a little bit of movement there. It's just taking a little bit longer to cycle actually. And you can hear the tonal change as well. And we'll wait until it comes down for the next cycle. There we go. Okay. So we listened to it kind of in a mid frequency over here. And then we just listen to it on kind of a low frequency. Let's try it up in a high frequency. Maybe right there. And that's kind of an interesting little pulsing type effect going on. Almost like what you would hear from a VCA, except there's not really any kind of opening and closing of the VCA that's present. It's a little bit different. Okay, well, just to experiment, um, I'm gonna go back to my A111 right here, our audio source, and uh, I'm gonna actually bring this down a couple of octaves and see if the effects are gonna be any different when I put the frequency of our oscillator 
in a couple lower octaves. So keep looking over at the oscilloscope. Let's see, we see kind of a a noted change right there. I'll bring it down one more. And I may need to change the magnification on my oscilloscope so we can see this effectively. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. Fairly interesting shape there. I'm going to go down one more octave. And I'm going to even adjust the magnification on my oscilloscope just one more time. And I think there, you can really start to see a glimpse of what is actually going on. You can see part of the sine wave kind of coming in, that curve. And then you can also see the saw wave. And they're kind of alternating, where one is having the upper hand, so to speak, in the A172 since it is reading the maximum voltage at any given moment. Let's try and bring up the octave range again. One more time. So we can see kind of a consistent shape occurring in our oscilloscope. And that kind of hopefully will give us a better idea as to uh, what to expect when we start using it for processing. Now these are just examples that I kind of came up with just to kind of experiment on the one hand and then also just to kind of see how it works. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's try a different waveform. So we did a saw wave. We take out the saw. And there we should just see our sign over at our oscilloscope. Uh, let's try... Let's go with a triangle wave. Now tonally that's definitely different. And we can see over at the oscilloscope that we're getting triangle waves there. Now my magnification is a little much for this, at least for this demonstration. I kind of want to see more of the peaks so we can tell it's a triangle wave. Although here that's a very interesting representation. We're kind of zoomed out quite a bit there. We're at about 500 milliseconds. You can actually see our sine wave. And then intermittently you can see that the triangle wave is kind of popping through. So I'm going to keep zooming out. Eventually I'll get back around. So I want to get kind of in this range right here. Yeah, that's good. So we can kind of see a different waveform being processed in the A172. Now, over at my A147 LFO signal that I'm feeding in there, I'm going to try a different waveform as well. I'm patching, so all we have is a triangle wave over at our oscilloscope. And let's just try a triangle wave. So a triangle wave low frequency and triangle wave audio rate. And we're at about a mid frequency setting right here. So let's bring this down a little bit. So what's kind of interesting about this, um, on the one hand, you know, it is similar to, I guess, a frequency modulation that you would do uh, to something like a VCO. Um, however, um, and I only say that in the respect of, you know, one waveform seems to be uh, sort of occurring simultaneously as the other. Uh, but if you were to just 
in general sort of pipe over your low frequency signal into here, your pitch would go up and it would go down. Um, however, what we're doing is a little bit different. You can kind of see one taking over on the oscilloscope in certain points, but the frequency of your VCO actually remains unchanged. So it can kind of give you different uh, situations where that might be useful to you. You might want kind of a modulation that varies from, let's say, an FM modulation. So if you were taking the maximum out from here and going into, let's say, the input, CV input, or the CV input of this over here, uh, you would get kind of a frequency modulation effect on one part of the, uh, of the movement. And then you would get an FM or audio rate modulation for another kind of an in and out kind of feel to the groove okay now we've just been solely looking at the max out um, I do want to kind of jump over to the min out so let's go ahead and do that <laughs> 